Hey guys, thanks for all the great tips on fixing LCD monitors. Uh, in particular, I got one link on this specific monitor, and they seem to indicate that the problem is most likely capacitors, as some of you other guys pointed out too, and, uh, and not the CFL. So, uh, the next step is to take this apart. I was able to get the standoff very easily, that's just a couple screws. Now, getting this open, not so easy. Apparently some of the other Samsung models, there are some actual release tabs along the edge. This does not. There's, there's just barely any crack at all between the two halves of this. So uh, I saw a tip about using a credit card and I'm slowly working on it and I finally have a little bit of a, a gap opened up here. So I'm going to keep at it and hopefully I can pop this open without trashing the case. <laughs> All right, I got it open. It was tough going at first, but once you get a couple of these tabs popped open, uh, it gets a lot easier. You can slip a, a small knife blade in there and stop popping them open and kind of unzip the whole case. So, what I'm presented with now is a metal covering I'll have to take off, and then there are some circuit boards under here. The, uh, the website that has the article on this repairing this monitor actually sells a little kit. I think it's about $15 for six or seven capacitors. Um, unfortunately, I didn't think this ahead very well because I just placed an order with Mauser Electronics for capacitors for my GE810 TV project. And if I have to place an order just for these, probably the shipping will be more than the actual parts cost. Uh, but at any rate, I'll see what's in here, see what kind of parts I need, and maybe I can uh, plan ahead for a future project and build up a decent sized order. I removed the metal shield and the problem was obvious. These two capacitors are bulging and leaking, so those definitely have to be replaced, and I might as well do these others while I'm at it. I think I'll leave these alone though, the surface mount, kind of a pain to deal with. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven capacitors. I'll have to be careful when I order these to make sure that uh, they're the right dimension. If, like for example, if I order caps that were too tall, the case won't go back together. These are 820 microfarad, and I know I don't have any of those on hand, so I'll just have to bite the bullet and place another order with Mauser. The new capacitors just showed up today. I ordered enough for both monitors. They are Nichikan, low ESR, long life, high reliability capacitors. These are exactly the same size as the existing ones, so they'll fit in no problem. These guys, they're the same height, but they're a little bit fatter, but I don't think there'll be a problem fitting them in. There's enough room around here. Uh, so, I'm going to remove this circuit board, take it onto my workbench, and put new caps in. Here's a reminder of what the problem is. Here's a new monitor. If I turn this on, within about two seconds, full brightness, great picture. Now here's one of the old monitors that has a problem. Turn it on right now, and then wait, and then wait. And I keep waiting. The one on my couch takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get to full brightness. This one isn't quite as bad, but still takes a while. And there we go. Slowly comes up to full brightness. All right, so time to put some new caps in and let's see if there's a difference. The new capacitors are going on quite easily. There's a new one here and here, and I still have this one to do. The reason it's going nicely is that this is a single-sided circuit board. So all I need to do is remove the solder from the old part on the bottom, like I have this one to do next. I'm using some solder wick, and uh, once I remove the solder, I straighten out the leads, pull the old part out, stick the new one on, and solder it up. Let's see if I can get this into frame for you guys. So, solder wick joint, apply heat, look up the old solder, and do this one, and 
Okay, let's just straighten these out. Got to observe the polarity when you put the new capacitor in. It's clearly labeled on this where the dark semicircle, that's the negative side. I was careful when I ordered these to make sure that the lead spacing on the new caps was the same as the old so I don't have to uh, don't have any problems with them fitting right into the old holes. Okay, just trim up the leads, and that's that. Two more left to do. I replaced the last couple caps and remounted the board and put the metal shield back on. I'm going to try mounting the stand to this so I can do a test before I put the back back on because that thing was a real pain to get off and I don't want to have to go through that again if I uh, did something wrong. I managed to get this mounted on its stand and I hooked up the video cable and the power cord. So, time for a test. Now I remember this is the one that was so bad it was unusable. It would take like 15 minutes to light up and even then it wasn't full brightness. So it's on. Bam, just like that. Off. And on. So, for less than $3 in capacitors, I was able to sell which a monitor that cost new, I think, about $400. So, thanks for all the tips, guys. I was totally wrong. It was not the CFLs. It was bad caps. Always those damn caps. I should have known better. One down, one to go. And then, I think, I will tackle that guy which is a Netgear network, uh, network drive that's getting flaky. I suspect it's the hard drive, but who knows? Maybe that has some bad caps too. It's about hmm, maybe four years old now. About the same age as the monitors, in fact. Definitely worth taking a look. That's all for now.